clear improvement, let's put it that way, that okay. Five Rat have brought to the drafting table in this game compared to game number one. Because I think the adjustments that they've made this time around allow them to be... They play better around each other with the heroes. There's a more clear red thread. I think their team fighting is better. I think their laning is going to be completely fine, especially like Figure pointed out, the sniper lane should be great. Um, and I think their lineup inherently wants to get stuff done, right? That was my main problem in the last game was that they were very AFK. And a lot of it was just strategically, it felt forced upon them by the way they just picked their heroes. Uh, this game, very different story. Um, eyes are on fade, I think, with everything Fear said, right? Like, let's see if this guy is on a redemption arc. Let's see if he can handle a tough laning matchup with his Beastmaster. We've seen this hero be really polarizing. It either owns or it sucks. Um, this lane matchup is hard. So if it's, if it's camp sucks here, if Beastmaster isn't kicking off, if the Pango isn't having too great of a game, we might end up with a kind of inverse situation of the previous game where Felt kind of struggle to get anything done and kind of just get run over. So let's see, though. One thing that the, I don't think the panel touched upon too much necessarily is mentality, right? You're reaching a game now. Things have been looking rough for Five Rat. You just got crushed in game one. If they can wipe the slate clean and just get in here with a decent mindset and just play the game, I think strategically they have a really good shot this game. But if they dig themselves into a hole, it's just going to be a crush again. Yeah, the thing is as well, like you speak of mindset, we, we can't forget Five Rider yet to win a series in NADPC. They are currently 0-4. And, and I believe, I can't say 100%, but I believe if they lose this series, they're almost guaranteed to be relegated. Pretty much. So there's a, a lot of pressure on them to try and win this game number two. See if it does pan out. Very new kinds of draft. I don't know how much I like this Darkseer hero right now. I'm just going to say it outright. I, I feel like it's got potential. I know the panel was talking about making lanes super weird with this hero, but I, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be enough. You know what's going to help you when you don't have the best laning start? Getting all four bounty runes. That's That covers a lot of ground. That's just a flat out 1k net worth advantage for your team before the game even starts. And 5 Rat 4 staff just managed to accomplish that with the way they placed their heroes. I feel like that should just... Unless the lineups are like really polar opposite somehow, like one team has the greediest and most awful lineup for taking runes and the other one has a godly one. Aside from that, 4 to 0 for runes should just never happen. Um, and that is a huge advantage that 5 Rat start this game with that I think they had no business getting these conditions actually uh, with the picks they have. They aren't even that threatening on level 1 on the runes. Like, look at their lineup. It's not like you can't go and contest a rune or two with Undying or, or the Beastmaster. So, they just outplayed them. They placed their heroes smarter. They clicked faster. On top lane. Yeah. Solji's okay. Be able to leap away. It's gonna be just fine. Of course, the the panel also discussed the fact that this this top lane's rather difficult for Fade, right? Like against Sniper Disruptor, not the most fun you'd have as a Beastmaster during the laning phase. And so far, he's doing okay. Yeah. It's all right. Solji's gonna fish there with the arrow. Not gonna connect though. And they, so the mid matchup as well, right? We haven't really talked about this just yet, but so last game the storm against Pango was pretty much a draw. Uh, this time around, Red Two is putting a lot more pressure on Kits from the get go, just really abusing Leshrac's range and overall spell harass. Uh, and on top of that, with the four bounties, he's already starting to build himself a sizable advantage in the mid lane. 300 gold up currently, with a full wave and a half coming into his tower. He's gonna miss a couple here though. And he will. The red. I'm still doing just fine. Kits. And back his way out. He'll be all right as well. First blood yet to be drawn between these two teams, of course. So, yeah, lanes are still looking rather good for Fire Red. And I guess this is, again, the strength of this kind of draft is they should be winning out the laning stage. Though, I say that, Hidden Mune at the bottom lane is having a, a fantastic time in terms of CS. Yeah, Darkseer is just not a good laner. That's pretty much the short version of this. This hero just de generally doesn't win lanes like it used to do, and TA exploits the the fact that she can outrange Ion Shells with, with Psy Blades, and she can just, like, cleave them down. And on top of that, the fact that Darkseer isn't able to really put any pressure on her in terms of denying, Red. because he has to respect on dying. Ooh, that was close. Uh, means that Hit Immune will be the big breadwinner here, just full-on free farming on the TA. Saw what that amounted to in the last game, but... 
I don't think this is an equally good TA game later on, later down the line. I think there's certain problems for, in this game for TA. Ion Shell is going to break your refraction really easy. Uh, there's Shrapnel, there's Leshrac with a billion instances of damage. There's repositioning from Toss, from Vacuum, from Glimpse, you know? I guess Dire Liner just has a lot of tools that I really like in Dota to have. I feel like it just gives you options. Uh, speaking of which, Fade. Might actually be in trouble here if he gets glimpsed back now. Yeah, absolutely. They were trying to go mid lane as well, though. Looks like there's going to be a toss back on Solji. He was rotating to try and help out. And well, across two lanes, Felt lose two heroes. And they were both from the off lane. Solji and Fade both going down. Rather unfortunate event as Moose had rotated on the time to make sure Solji does get caught off guard. And uh, that, that's a pretty massive win for the side of uh, Five Rat. It is. They're getting very far ahead, actually, as a matter of fact, right now. The, there's one hero here that truly has a good game, and that's TA. Um, and TA can never do it alone. Like, if TA is having a great game, but the other cars aren't, TA is one of those heroes that you can just shut down with this type of strategy and just handle it. You can itemize against her. You can focus her in fights when, when your cores are doing great against their counterparts. So... Something has to start working out for Felt relatively soon in the other lanes. Like, either Pango needs to get poppin' and find a kill on Lesh together with someone in level 6, or you need to help your Beastmaster. Fade is jungling minute 5 on this level 3 beast. And they're trying to give Solji the lane, and he's just gonna end up probably dying. Yeah. That is... Ooh! Okay, good fairy. He will live. Barely. But he can't get back to the lane. And it... The, the Dire also aren't pushing, so even if, even with him not dying, there's no benefit to be reaped here. Beastmaster can't go up and be like, hell yeah, I get a full wave because Mirana kited them off or whatever. He's just full on sticking to the jungle, farming the stack. He will complete it, but this is not where you want to be as Beastmaster. Yeah, very desperate times right now for the, for the side of Feldalist during this laning stage. His bottom lane looks like they've also caught out Hit Immune on the TA. These refraction charges are melting, but Moose is gone. Speed, he will chase down Hit Immune, but he's dropping rather low himself. There's going to be a trade here, yeah. It will All be. Right. Albino finds a double. Meanwhile, top lane, well, Soldi's gone down again on the Mirana. A giant just completely destroying him on this on this disruptor. And I, I suppose in regard to the bot fight, like, at least you find Hit Immune, right? Like, you're shutting down the carry of the side of Phil. Yeah, it's something. I still think overall Felt will be pretty happy with this trade, right? Because at least something is going well somewhere right now. Uh, I think Hit Immune basically played that situation completely perfectly. He got all the damage out he could. He delayed his death as long as possible so that speed surge ran out. Giant. And then the Undying could clean him up. Yep. Yeah. Good chase. An extra kill here. Fade will get that with his one boar. <laughs> he has a huge Ancient stack coming his way soon. Um... They need to protect this one, and this one has to go to Beastmaster. They can't farm it with TA for now, first off. And oh. secondly, she needs to... Uh, the, be the Beastmaster needs it. He has to has to oh. progress further. Yeah, I don't know about that smoke. Yeah, Solji messed them up. So that, that messed up the stack on the medium camp, and it almost killed Beastmaster, or killed Marana's courier, because when they smoked the creeps <laughs> aggro on the courier... <laughs> But fortunately, that didn't happen. I believe the Dyers still get gold if the Curry is killed by neutrals. I think the other team just gets credit. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, the gold is just... It's just hard-coded that the enemy team gets gold when a Courier dies, I want to say. But uh, it's a bit of an edge case. It doesn't happen very often. No. Bit of a shame, though. Like, considering your Beastmaster's having oh, this rough of a bottom game. Bottom lane. Every stack matters as bottom lane. Speed's in trouble here. He certainly is. Rolling Thunder is going to reach as the Surge does connect him to speed. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's still... gone. No chance, surely. He does go for a cheeky little vacuum, but it's not going to matter. Moose also dropping, so a very... No, sorry, Moose Courier also <laughs> dropping. I was like, what? <laughs> How did he die? <laughs> they do find the darks here. Nice little rotation here from our Pango. And I felt they are slowly chipping their way back into this game. I, they're making the moves they can, right? you got to commend that. It's hard, but Kits has to get the job done here. I think the perfect play now is to somehow find a kill on the Sniper. Uh, Pango is an exceptionally good hero at killing this hero early on in the game before he gets items. Sniper has no way of repositioning. He's mega slow. He isn't tanky. Um, and killing him would open up for access to the top tower for Fade. So a perfect time would probably be when Fade hits 6 and gets Roar. As far as the 5-rat side goes, 
maybe you just keep this up, you know? Like, yeah, you're hemorrhaging a little bit of kills here and there, but you're still farming very well. Your Lesh is getting big. Um, and obviously your Sniper is the biggest winner of the game so far. Giant? Yeah, okay. they're just not going to get hit. Forcing him away from that triangle, making sure that Fade can indeed take down these Ancient Stacks, because it is going to take a little bit of time. Yeah, this will be huge, though. This Ancient Stack is going to get him close to level 7, and he's going to get his... Not quite the Helm of the Dominator, but again, opening up for a possibility of a play up top, I think, is the most important thing here. Slowly but surely. Yeah, it's obviously got to do it very safely, as there's just so much damage can be burst, burst out by these damn Ancients. And Vyra, they aren't going to infiltrate this uh, this triangle, so it doesn't seem like they can really make any sort of players bottom lane speed. Yeah, they, they got to be careful here, Five Red. Actually, this is not that easy of a cut to make if TA is is ready to fight. Because if she hits them both, there's no obvious surge target, but they do find the Undying right away. Yeah, Albino has gone. Moves dropping low. Hit a new. Never mind. He's the one in trouble. They'll burn right through him with the iron shells. Yeah, that so was that, a. That was basically the exact way that was not supposed to go for Fel. <laughs> Undying died before TA even connected on the play. It's one thing if they're trading there and TA and Undying are fighting them together, because if TA is dealing a lot of damage, you have to be careful who you surge when, because the other target is obviously left vulnerable. But if Undying is dead before she connects, it's a no-brainer. You just run her down and kill her with two Iron Shells. So that was very easy for Five Rat. It was a bit of a shame too, because the he was mid-animation for the Tombstone. That got cancelled by the Avalanche. Yeah. And it's like, well, now you've got zero hope. And yeah, then you got vacuumed on the second attempt, right? So yeah. That was well done. Red? Well, they don't really have the Rolling Thunder, so they couldn't really think nah. about that Leshrac. Just got to grab the farm there on Pango. Bottom tower under pressure as well. I think this is perfect for speed. He's just going to cut the next wave, probably. Uh, opted to go for a Vanguard build here. I guess he will finish a full Crimson with this at some point against Beastmaster and, I guess, to an extent, TA and Marana. Not the best, but... Uh, alternatively, you can just get a value Vanguard and just go for something else, obviously. Moose. Already spotted, but does get the Avalanche, still will drop. Oh, that's a good That's a great combo. Static Storm. They've caught the Pango. Raw gonna hold down the Leshrac, but the Pulse Nova is still going. And that's a max Diabolic Edict as well, so it's just so much damage. Kits is down, Solji gets out. But a successful team fight once again for Five Rat. And those net worths, like, they are only getting higher and higher for the side of Five Rat. It, this is not slowing down. Yeah, they tried to get a little bit of a trade there mid with the TA, but just Glyph Pop defending against the Siege Creep, and TA has to retreat and just go and farm the jungle. So th this, is, this game is a totally different beast than the last game, because... In this game, even though Felt have heroes that can make moves, this time around, Five Rat have so much going their way in terms of just defending any objective and just fighting back. I think it's going to be really difficult to even get this top tier one. DNM can just sit there and put level four shrapnels on the creep waves, and it's very hard for you to dive him because the TP rotations are so strong that they can bring in. Nice leap there from Soldier will be fine, but the rune will go the way of red too. Are they actually thinking about diving DNM here? I mean, I wouldn't mind it if they drop the tombstone and get the info, but... Oh, well, all right. They are not interested in defending this. I think, I genuinely think the Dire could have defended this tower with the game state that they're in. So this is a little bit of something, at least for Felt. Now Beastmaster gets unlocked, right? Enemy top tier one is gone. You get to start playing the area um, with your summons, with the Hawk. With your Helm of the Dominator, you keep pushing that in to put some pressure on the map. I mean, five to eight, like considering the start that they had, uh, they're not too far behind. Only 2k net worth is the lead for five rats. So they've done a great job on the side of Feld of being able to kind of give themselves a fighting chance after this laning stage with all the farm they've acquired from that triangle. I mean, sure, you're, you're still very worried about DNM for sure, the sniper, and of course, speed as well. His net worth is really starting to escalate out of control in this dark seat. It's obviously going to just turn into that kind of aura bot for his team. Yeah. It's going mech into, looks like mech into crimson, or greaves into crimson, okay. Um, I don't know, so I'm personally a really big fan of dagger on this hero, uh, but I think it depends on the game how valuable it is. I think in this game, dagger on Darkseer is just god tier. Vacuuming into avalanche, vacuum into static storm, vacuum into leshrac is just very, very good. 
And the enemy team's lineup inherently will just naturally kind of group up, right? Like TA is short range, Beastmaster has to come up close, Undying. Uh, even the Pango, when he uses Swashbuckle, if he's a little bit too offensive, can get caught. Um, and any good vacuum combo just ends the fight. Kids. Kids can get glimpsed here. Should be glimpsed, but... Oh, oh yeah, vacuum in time. Yeah. Oh, he didn't have it. Okay. It's Unlucky. So you, you force out the Rolling Thunder, but you know you don't really that's, get what you wanted. That's decent in itself. That's a huge cool... Or, I mean, it's not a very long cooldown, but it's a very important cooldown for the Radiant team to be able to do anything. Yeah. <clears throat> so effectively, now you're just in control for the next minute. Just keep farming, keep pushing waves as you will. It's kind of the thing, though, with the, with the state of the game, uh, I'm not really sure Felt would even want to try and make a play. It's, uh, oh, Glimpse back. Maybe now would have been useful. Hidden Mune does get caught out. Refraction charges burnt very, very quickly, oh, but the split Oh, the stun. Oh. He's actually going to survive that. That looked like a totally... That's insane. Speed. Speed. Well, Speed. can they do anything about this guy? They don't have Pango ult. No, they don't. Speed knows it too. Oh, is he not going to get Tomb off again? Oh, he did get it off. That's he, actually pretty important here. He got it off felt. in time, but Five Rider just backing off casually and Arrow, not going to land. And that's it. So they get oh, the was Undying. so awkward. <laughs> that's a, such a weird engagement wow, for sure. that was very weird to watch. All right, well, Five Rider Force Staff got away with that. They grab an Undying kill, they force Tombstone, and now they're going to hit high ground or... Okay, let's take it easy. <laughs> going to hit mid tier one. Oh. High ground is, uh, is a prophecy. It is. For this game. Uh, yeah, but I do think it's a me. prophecy that's more and more likely to come true as this game is progressing right now. Yeah. 3k advantage, mid T1 tower does end up going down to DNM. And again, the net worth is still well and truly the way of Fire Rat. Like, these calls are just farming so effectively. But again, like, you look back at this TA. He is still finding farm. In fact, now he's oh, top of the net worth. It's fade. It's faded. He's faded, all right. There goes your Beastmaster. Do you remember that song when that played all the time on the radio? Oh, don't even get me started. <laughs> it's terrible. I mean, oh, it's a good you hate song. that song. No, no, oh, it's a okay. good song, but just, you know, any good song gets just played to death. It's giant. Still oh, running. He'll die. Yeah. I think that's the first kill in quite a while that the Radiant managed to acquire in this game. Let me see. Uh... Yeah, that is their first kill since 11 minutes in. So five minutes of drought. You're playing Beastmaster, you're playing Marana, you're playing Pango. One kill every five minutes. It's generally not a recipe for a victory unless you're getting really good farm across the map and can't say that has been the case either. Fear's concern about Fade's Beastmaster against the Sniper has come true so far. Yeah. And he is... I wonder if, like, in games like this, when you're having a hard time on Beastmaster, is there just no other build? Like, do you have to buy this item every game? Do you have to buy Helm of the Overlord? So that's the thing, because sometimes we see players... Maybe, maybe you do. Like, sometimes know. we see players have very rough games, and they'll just be like, screw this, I'll go Blink Rush, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, you are against a sniper after all. Like, it doesn't seem like it would have been the worst choice. Mm -hmm. To just say, screw it, I, I just want Blink. I just want to just jump in and roar, and then I'll just die. Don't even show me the Aghanim Scepter, Mr. Observer. <laughs> I don't want to see that drums of slop. I think if you go if you go Dagger, the TA has to also go Dagger. Because, like, there's no point in Blink roaring anyone if your team isn't killing them, because you're not doing it. Yeah. So you have to have a reliable follow-through that kills a key hero, and that key... That key kill needs to be so important that it's worth sacrificing your own damage output for. And that's the problem that most Beastmasters have, right? Is that, is there really a single kill that is that valuable that you can do that? Right, this is pretty Hail Mary territory, honestly, from Radiant, but it is big if they get it off. I mean, they're getting away with it. Yep, they kill it fast. All right. Oh, Fire Fry, I mean, this is a big loss. Like, considering... Caught slipping. Uh, they were literally caught slipping here. Oh, Fire Rat. They forgot about Drosh. That they did. <laughs> Stop it, Sindrun. Uh, right. goes down. Well, that was actually terrible, by the way. Yeah, I know. That wasn't even close to funny. <laughs> I know, but you laughed. <laughs> so it was funny. It's so bad. That's why it's so funny. <laughs> Top there lane. it is. The secret to life. Giant. Okay. He's caught out. I mean, I don't know if he right. dies. Kids is just going to TP away. 
That was my most played song, by the way, in 2022. Forgot about Dre. Absolutely. Oh, really? It's a great song. It is. It's a classic. It is a classic. What's also a classic is getting ages on TA and immediately losing it. And there we are. Getting yeah, Muna. I mean, there's no rules. trying to trade, but. Oh, in the meantime, Mirana gets killed in the middle of nowhere by Lash. Now yeah, Soldier's gone. Now with DNM around, I mean, Moose might still die, but no. Got the toss off in time. And now Albina Zebra tried to help. Beautiful. Save a friend syndrome. Love to see it. Minus three. And Aegis. So all the value that Felt just got out of that was just out the window in 30 seconds. And again, that just puts Five Rat back in the driver's seat. They're in a really good, really good control of the game. They can just keep playing it like this, keep pushing out bottom, keep pushing out mid, have someone take care of the. Beastmaster garbage top once in a while and just you know, keep escalating, keep scaling. Um, and eventually, bottom tier two is going to fall. You're going to get the outpost, and then the map is just going to open up very well for you. So would like to see the sniper just really try to put some pressure on this tier two. Uh, DNM is heading over there just now, and they're going to bring the numbers. They recognize that this is the next big objective in the game, and I really agree with this choice. I think ideally Lesh should actually bots for this so it gets done in time. Oh, jump in. Toss back, vacuum. Whoopsie daisies. Static storm a little bit whiffed, but... Uh, well, if it dealt damage to the tower... I mean, that would have been amazing. Sadly, <laughs> it doesn't. Amazing. <laughs> it's, so Kits goes down, you're losing your Pango again, and... Well, Phil, they do look like they're just slowly falling apart. Like, the, the game plan just has not gone the way they wanted. I think their lineup is just very one-dimensional, and if that... If that one thing their lineup is meant to do isn't happening early, it's not a very good lineup at playing from behind and playing recovery, right? Oh, Tombstone. Uh, this is a very interesting fight. Like, Soldier's dead. He certainly is. They've dropped the Tombstone, but the Glimpse back is there as well. Albino's invisible. No detection. Okay. Dust. That's fortunate. Does not connect. Tips up. <laughs> <laughs> I made the voice louder. It does make sense. <laughs> well, with that, 6 to 16 now, Cinder. Yep. 6k net worth advantage. Something uh, to keep in mind about this game as well, from a Pango's perspective, is that he's forced to buy Shard to deal with Disruptor, right? Because he needs to have something against Glimpse. So when you play this matchup, it's kind of a... It's an interesting dynamic because it feels really good to buy it against Disruptor, but then you remember, man, I usually don't have to. So it's just 1,400 gold that is being forced out by the enemy team just having a hero in the game. Um, and it means Kit's item progression is really slow. So he has Diffusal, he has Orb of Corrosion, but he's very far away from a Blink Dagger. And we're 21 and a half minutes in, so his ability to really lead the charge for his team with this Blink that I think could make a big difference is just very far off. Now the one piece of good news is that Hit Immune is finally getting his BKB on TA, so he can stand his ground now. Only thing really tr threatening him is Diabolic Edict breaking his refraction and then getting mauled by the sniper. So if they can somehow handle those two heroes, could turn it into something, but he might just get jumped and burst here. Oh no. Oh, they missed the toss. They did miss the toss. Moose needs to get the hell out of there. Rolling Thunder, eventually gonna reach Moose, surely. It's a high level surge. It's oh, nice from Red. He gets knocked up on the high ground. That's exactly one of what you want to do there is position yourself so that if you get hit, Brings and you now up. the turnaround, big vacuum, speed caught four, and now the static storm to lock him down, but hold on a minute. Hit immune's still going. Problem is his whole team's dead. Oh, his BKB's out. Oh, they didn't have anything? Avalanche and Toss were on one second cooldown. Both spells, so he does get out, but another, another easy win for five rat. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, what a great vacuum. And again, you just get to see. And I, I love the fact that he bought the dagger there, speed, right? It's just yeah. showcasing what I was mentioning, that this is just such a good game for Darkseer to initiate for his team. And the, the moment that vacuum three men Static Storm came out, I just felt like this fight is immediately over. Even if TA gets to hit some targets, even if they have a tombstone down, doesn't matter. Like, combo's just way too powerful. They don't have any BKBs except hers, so the other heroes that got caught just get killed off immediately. And Oh, toss up. Who? Oh, they caught Hidden Mune. That's the target. That's the guy you want. Vac Albino back with him. It's getting into that territory. Here we go, Solji. He'll die with his team. In the wise words of an English teacher. <laughs> this one looks over, John. Oh, it certainly does, John. Yeah. Fine, rat. 
Time to go to the John, John. <laughs> There's anything I'm going to... Oh. Oh, boy. Here we go. There it is. Loading has joined the game. <laughs> <laughs> well. <clears throat> what do you do? What do you really do as Radiant in this situation? I feel like there are, mm. there are games where this is the game state, like you're 12k down minute 24, and I see some sort of crazy path to victory. I'll be honest, I'm struggling to see it here. I think their lineup just doesn't have the best tools. Red. Well, they're going to probably find a pick here on the tiny to maybe stall things out a little bit. Or I mean, are they? This? Yeah, they are. Dagger? Oof, that was kind of close, actually. Close call, indeed. They do hold high ground, so you have that going for you. Yep. I just don't... Like, well, what's the light at the end of the tunnel here for, for Phil? Like, they're, they're so far behind. The TA is nowhere near at the level she needs to be to, to you know, just be able to one-shot people. Yeah, so the thing that I would hope for for them is if they had, like, some sort of displacement, right? So that, okay, the enemy team is pushing, we can get a hero out of position, and we can get a kill, and then we can build on that. But the only thing they have to keep the enemy heroes, like, to put pressure on them is a roar. But he doesn't have a dagger. And if he roars, you're effectively have you have to run into them, right? So the nature of the fight is that you will group up. Guess who loves that? Oh. Everyone on Dire. <laughs> Literally all five heroes want that to happen. So it's it's tough. The thing that this Dire lineup doesn't like is when Sniper gets pulled out of position or you toss in a Leshrac or whatever you can imagine, right? But the Radiant have none of that. They have weaker team fight and arguably weaker scaling as well. So I just think all the boxes are just checked for the Dire now and it's just a kind of a formality, keep pushing out the waves, get the next Roche and go high ground. And the, the Dire will really have a hard time dying twice on a Sniper with Aegis, right? He even has Satanic. Like, he just went for pretty survivable build here on DNM. It's going to be tough to deal with him. Keeping multiple heroes top here, looking for Fade. I mean, Fade. Or he's having dead. <laughs> he's had a, such a tough game already in Fade. Oh, he's going to commit the roll while he's at it. You know, sometimes when you're having a bad day, you just scream afterwards. And yeah. And then you save your dragon. <laughs> Does he, though? Yeah. All right. He's going to save his dragon. That's what's nice about playing... Maybe that's why people love playing Beastmaster. I'm like, why do people like this hero so much? It's like when you're dead, you can still play I Am A Hero Simulator by having an ancient black dragon. That's true. Just throwing fireballs all the time. That's kind of neat. Zolgi. He's okay, he'll leap away, but Speed's still kind of watching him as Albino Zebra gets caught out here by Moose. Won't have the damage, obviously. Tombstone's going to be dropped preemptively. Rest of Five Red are just casually moving in, though. But they are very, very slow as Zolgi goes down. DNM picks him off. Moose, he just casually TPs out, but they've left Red 2 behind. Well, hold on a minute. You, you don't want to lose your left track like this, Red. He's fighting back. The Bloodstone's going to heal him up. Never mind what I said. Leave Red alone. He'll do it himself. Kids has been left behind. He's gone. Guess they can't find the TA. So at least for Felt, they keep him alive. But again, there's just, there's no progression, right? The Roche, Roche is spawning in 10 seconds. The Radiant will know right away. They have a trap in there, but the tricky part is going to be accessing that part of the map at, at all for your lineup. It's going to be very hard to get over there. Speed on that Dark Seer has so much utility for his team. He's just going to, whenever the fight breaks out, he's going to pop his Crimson Guard immediately. He's going to pop Greaves, vacuum into any one of his teammates, and it's going to be wonderful. So, tough times. Tough times to be a Radiant player. That it is. And extra tough times potentially to be Soldier. Okay, he actually juked him there around the his own ward, but that is going to be the end of the bottom tier 2 tower. And you would imagine 5 rat 4 staff are eager to go and grab themselves an Aegis for DNM, along with his soon-to-be butterfly. Hit him, you. Toss back, speed, static storm. Oh, they've just locked him down. He's got no gameplay. 96% win probability for, for 5 rat. I'd say that's about accurate. I'll put it higher than that. I mean, I, you know, I was trying I, to be nice. I'm not sure where these percentages are coming from. The Damn, I sound like a Debbie Downer, but like <laughs> <laughs> the Radiant are in dire straits. It is not easy. 
they to do back anything. Yeah. Well, Moose is gonna. Okay. Moose is gonna fight Fade one v one. Okay. He's, he's not winning. No. Moose, you're dead. Yeah, he is. Oh. Okay. But the Bodrax is going down. Yeah, I guess so. I don't think he needed to do that though. No. <laughs> I, I think maybe he was trying to like make sure he couldn't TP away. Yeah. But he still does. But it's like even if Beastmaster TP's back, he's fighting without his TA. So. They couldn't have won that fight anyway. Pango roll, trying desperately to connect on anything, but the Dire Heroes are already somewhat gone. Okay, maybe. Sniper. No That's BKB. a nice rolling thunder. Kids is going to hold them down, DNF. No BKB available, but the Satanic has been popped. And now the vacuum wall from speed, making sure they can't keep up. Hit him, you're trying to come from the back, but it's not enough. You know, boys, it might be that time. It might be about it. I mean, this game is not getting any better. Well, it's getting better for DNM. His butterfly is arriving. That's true. So that's nice. Fun fact, butterfly, the Danish word for bow tie. Is that right? Yes. So now he is uh, dressed for the occasion. Oh, you Danish are very clever. I mean, arguably, if you look at Sniper, probably not dressed for the occasion, honestly. This is not... Oh, oh okay. GG. Yeah. Like I said, Syndrome, I'm an expert at calling GGs. Yep. I know when it's coming. You know what it's like to be a loser. <laughs> well, I know it's time, guys. I've been in this position before. Hey, I was going to say screwed. it myself. No need to point it out for me, Sindrin. I was yeah. going to say it myself.